Alrighty, good morning everyone. Thank you for being here and joining us uh, for our child care conference. Uh, my name is Joanne and I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Lillian. Good morning everybody. Uh, my name is Lillian Mesquida and I'm the County Extension Agent Family and Community Health from Cameron County and I want to say welcome to our child care conference. Uh, we are expecting from our speakers to provide a very helpful information for you so you can complete your clock hours. And um, what I do in Cameron County are different programs like cooking well with diabetes, uh, dinner tonight, parenting classes, uh, anger management, child passenger safety, uh, health talk express, set up, scale down and walk across Texas. Those are some of the programs I can, you know, implement with the, the people that they need the, that information. So you know what, if you need something, just let us know, we can, we can help you with that. So welcome again, and I'm gonna pass on now to my coworker, Joan. Howdy everyone. First of all, I wanna thank you all for um, your responsibilities. You do so much um, for the kids. And um, thank you for joining and learning a couple of topics here. My name's Joanne. I am the Family and Community Health County Extension Agent for Hidalgo County. Some of my responsibilities that I can offer um, in the County of Hidalgo is I'm a certified um, mental health first aid instructor. So um, we can provide some training just like the CPR training we have for mental health. It's a three year certification and it basically helps um, someone that's going through a crisis as well as um, eliminating stigmas and um, helping an individual that is um, in need um, with mental health. I'm also a certified child passenger safety technician where I can inspect a car seat. If a car seat does not meet inspections, then we provide them with a free car seat. So this is a great opportunity where you can tell your parents if you notice that a child does not have a car seat, you can refer them, refer them to us. We're now doing um, virtual classes. Um, eventually we'll get there face to face, but because of COVID reasons, we are going um, virtual for the meantime. We have our parenting classes where we talk about self-esteem, where we talk about parent-child communication as well as positive discipline. We have anger management classes where we talk about the cost of anger, relaxation skills, um, a plan for real life coping, um, step up, scale down, which we'll talk a little bit more about it's, um, and walk across Texas. It's, uh, we're having this program in November, um, but we'll talk more about that. And I also have a volunteer group that I facilitate called the Masculine Volunteers where we teach individuals how to sew. We have moved this um, online, so if anyone is interested in sewing, you can pick up our pattern here for the month and um, you can learn through our virtual um, classes. Ms. Lillian, I'm going to move on to the next slide. I don't know if you have used Teams before, but this is a picture of uh, your Teams uh, screen. If you hover your uh, mouse on top of the screen, you are going to get this a bar and depends on what you need to use, you click on it and that way you can uh, use uh, th this bar to communicate with us. When you have a question, raise your hand, you click on the hand and then you, you, we are going to see that somebody um, has a question or if you want to talk to us in mute, uh, you have you can um, unmute your uh, mic and that way, you know, we can hear what you want to say. But this is the way we can use the bars and communicate with us. Yes. Joanne? We'll be monitoring the chat box. So if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to write that. Um, we'll address the questions at the end of every presentation. Um, as well, um, if the presenter says unmute your mic, well, um, you can um, already have an idea on how to unmute your mic. In addition, we're recording this program session, um, Child Care Conference, just in case uh, your colleagues are unable to attend or was having trouble, um, trouble attending this meeting, this meeting will be recorded. We'll put the link um, on our website and um, then your colleague can click the video and then answer the post test. So here's the agenda for this conference. Um, it is from nine in the morning and it'll end at 12. Um, we have three presenters. Um, we've um, gotten these presenters based on our evaluation. So at the end of the, the program, we do ask that you complete this evaluation because it helps us bring those topics on what you all wanna learn. 
So um, the first educational topic is the importance of play for children's mental health. And this is addressed by Miss Stephanie Bowen. She is a Prairie View um, County Extension agent. Um, we have um, at 10 o'clock, we have Taking Care of You, Mind, Body and Spirit by Dr. Purcell. Um, we're going to be talking about mental health as an employee, how to do that. Um, you have to be your best to take care of those kids, right? And our last presentation is at 11 o'clock storytelling. This is by Miss Benya. She is um, the librarian in from the West Lico. And then um, from 11.45 to 12, um, you will be completing your post test as well as an evaluation. I'll put it in the chat box, the post test um, when I um, complete this presentation, but it is from the email that I sent out. If you don't have that email, don't worry. I'll put it in the chat box where you can download it. And um, as you know, to get your clock hours, you have to answer these um, these questions that is regarding the presentation. It's not um, difficult. You have trouble. Um, don't hesitate to ask us, um, but um, the pre presenters will cover those um, questions at the end. I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Ms. Lillian. What is the next slide? Oh, the, uh, the next slide is the three hour clock hours. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, you're going to be getting three clock hours. And as I mentioned, my coworker mentioned before, you need to complete the post test and then you have to email that to Joanne Resty. You have the email address there in your slide. And also it's very important for you to complete the evaluation. The link is right there, so you can click on it and then you can complete the evaluation. And when you are done with everything, then you're going to get your certificate uh, as long as you have pay and uh, finish with your post test and uh, any questions that you have, you know, that you answer to that, then we are going to give you the certificate. Yes. So, Joan. Thank you. And like I mentioned, if you didn't receive that email, don't worry, I'll, I'll link it at the uh, the chat box. Um, so just give me a couple of minutes. Um, but before we begin with the conference, I want to let you know of a upcoming program that Lily and I are hosting. It's called um, Step Up, Scale Down plus Walk Across Texas. It is um, a rural Grandy Valley um, program series. It is 12 weeks and the whole intent of this program is to move to a healthier weight by um, providing you with education on nutrition and physical activity. So about 20 minutes will be done on nutrition and then another 20 will be a physical activity exercise. <clears throat> the deadline to, to register is the 26th of October, which is this Monday. Um, we'll provide you with a link there as well. Um, you get to choose if you want English or Spanish. It will be at 10 o'clock every Monday. However, you can't attend. Um, we will have it recorded and just um, as typical, you'll just answer a couple of questions to get your certificate at the end of the 12 weeks. There will be a motivational Facebook group to continue to help you exercise throughout the whole week and eat um, healthy. Um, and as well, there are weekly incentives for the ones that have walked the most and has lost the most um, pounds in there. So. Um, if this program's free, we encourage you all um, adults to um, register. And it's more because during holiday, we have the Halloween, the candies, we have Thanksgiving, the pies. Um, in December, we have tamales. January, we have buñuelos, right? And that way, we can uh, it can add up quickly. So this program is going to be used as a tool to stay focused and um, try to remain in a healthy weight. Usually when we are not in a healthy weight, we tend to have chronic illnesses such as diabetes, heart disease. So um, this is the, the, the goal of the program. So our conference um, is going to begin. Um, Ms. Lillian will introduce Ms. Stephanie. She will be um, presenting the importance of play for children's mental health. Okay, we want to say thank you to Stephanie Bowman. Uh, she's the account extension agent, family and community health from Prairie View. And she is in Hidalgo County and she does different programs that uh, talks about health and wellness and nutrition, child obesity and prevention, financial management, parenting and family life skills. So if you have any need of these uh, uh, classes, just talk to Miss uh, Stephanie Bowman and she will be more than happy to help you. So Stephanie, thank you for your time and here we go. Thank you so much, Lillian. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to um, set up my um, PowerPoint and share my screen. 
So give me a second to do that. Let's see. Okay. You're not seeing anything yet, are you? No. No? Okay, let me try again. In the meantime, if everybody can mute uh, their, your mic, and that way we can, you know, um, have a better internet speed. And then um, just want to let you know, if you didn't have the post post that was emailed to you, I have attached it under the chat box, so you're welcome to download it. I put it in Microsoft Word as well as PDF, whatever is easier and compatible for your um, system. Okay, are you seeing um, the speaker notes or the regular? Yes. Okay. I see speaker notes and I, I see um, your presentation there. I 100% see your presentation. Oops, now I see your screen. Oops, okay. Hold on, give me just a second. Okay, so you're seeing speaker notes here. The, yeah. In the Spanish only, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Bowman, um, and I work for the Cooperative Extension Program out of Prairie View a &M University. Um, as Ms. Lillian mentioned, I'm one of the extension agents for Family and Community Health, um, working in Hidalgo County. Um, I'm so, so happy and grateful to be here with you all today um, and that I get to be with you here through this virtual platform. I, I want to thank Ms. Joanne and Ms. Lillian for allowing me the opportunity to speak with you all on such an important topic. Um, so the topic of my presentation is the importance of play for children's mental health and well-being. A big part of my job as an extension agent is working with youth audiences of all different ages. Um, and this has always been something that I've been passionate about. So to kind of tell you a little bit about myself, um, I grew up in a big family. Um, my mom was one of seven and my dad was one of 16 kids. So um, my siblings and I always had tons of cousins to play with growing up. Um, on my dad's side, my I was kind of one of the, the, older, um, the older cousins. So my aunts and uncles always kind of looked to me to help with the younger cousins. Um, I was kind of the motherly one. I was the one that was always asked to babysit. So I think from a young age, I've um, always known that working with youth was going to be a part of my future career. Um, and I've always been really fascinated with the stages of child development. Um, and now I have two kids of my own. I'm um, a mother of twin boys. They're two and a half right now. So it's been really a great joy to just watch them grow and develop and go through some of these stages that I'll be talking about today. So again, I'm excited to speak with you all today on this topic, and we'll get started by defining play. So what actually is play? So play is a universal interdisciplinary process. Um, the early years, especially birth through about three years of age, these are the most important significant sh um, years in shaping the brain because those hands-on experiences are what cause the child to develop increasing numbers of what are called brain synapses. Um, basically, brain synapses are the, just those connections of the brain that shape and, and pattern the growing brain. So play um, in the context of secure attachment to adults, it gives children that enrichment that stimulation, that physical activity that they need to develop their brains for future learning. Um, play is innately a self-expressive activity based on the child's powers of imagination. So I'm sure most of us have wonderful memories of playing in our childhood because that's that's just what we did. We, we played, that's what kids did was play. But I think, um, over the years, as technology has kind of become a more, um, more and more a part of our everyday lives, I think that element of play has somewhat diminished in childhood um, to the point where pediatricians are now even prescribing play because it's just not happening enough.
across cultures. Oh, I went too far. OK, across cultures, um, play tends to involve the same things, um, the same overall arcing themes like nurturing. Um, you know, you see kids playing with dolls and mimicking some of the things that they see um, as far as nurturing, feeding the baby dolls and, um, you know, rocking the baby to sleep. So nurturing is one of those um, it themes of play, uh, family relationships, roles of different people in their lives. These are some of the themes that you see um, in children's play. And then also play just as is just as important as some of the other fundamental rights of a child like health, nutrition, water and sanitation, adequate standards of living, um, an education, leisure, cultural activities. All of these are fundamental rights um, of a child. And right alongside those things, play is just as important as one of those uh, relevant elements to ensure maximum development of the child. So overall play is all about having fun. So any activity, whether it's organized or unstructured that your child finds fun and enjoyable is considered play. Um, but of course we know that play is much more than just having fun for your child. There's a lot that's going on in their brain. Um, and as a child grows, they go through different stages of play development. While playing, children learn and develop some of those important skills that they're going to continue to use in their lifetime. Things like problem solving, creativity, um, willingness to take risks. All of these are just a few of the skills that are developed through play. So let's talk about some of these stages of play development. The first one um, is called unoccupied play. So this happens between birth up to about three months of age. So this is where the stage where baby is just making a ton of movements um, with their limbs, their arms, legs, hands, feet. Um, and they're really learning about and discovering how their body moves, what, how different body parts work and what they can do. Um, so that's unoccupied play. Then we have solitary play. Um, this is birth to about two years of age. So at this stage, the child plays alone. Um, they're not really interested in playing with others quite yet. They're in their, their own little world, so to speak. And then we have spectator onlooker behavior. This happens about two years of age. Um, and during this stage, a child begins to watch other children playing, but doesn't necessarily play with them. So they're starting to get a little more curious. They're starting to um, watch and see what other children are doing, but still not interacting too much. Then we have associate play. Oh, I'm sorry, parallel play. Um, play parallel play is starts at about two years of age and up. Um, and this is when your child starts to play alongside or near others, but still doesn't necessarily interact or play with the other children. This stage is referred to as parallel play. We have associate play. This is between three and four years of age. So now the child is starting to interact with others during play, um, but there's still not a large amount of interaction at this stage. So a child might be doing an activity related to the kids around him, but might not actually be interacting with another child. So for example, um, kids might all be playing on the same piece of playground equipment, but all doing different things like one child is climbing, another one is swinging, another one is sliding, etc. So they're starting to interact a little bit more. Then we have cooperative play. So cooperative play um, is about four years of age and up. So this is now when a child um, begins to play together with others and has interest in both the activity and the other children involved in playing. That's considered cooperative play. So we're going to talk about some of the, the benefits or the powers of play. So the first one is it stimulates early brain development. 
So playing can promote a child's brain development in so many different ways, um, including providing the children with those crucial life experiences to set the ground for brain growth. Um, infant brains are equipped with an overabundance of those brain cell connections that we talked about, those synapses. Um, they have an overproduction of those brain cell connections from an early, early age, infant infanthood. Um, and these, these brain cell connections allow information captured from those early years to build the foundation for the brain. So you always hear people say, um, oh, kids are like sponges. They, um, from an early age, they absorb all the information about the world around them. That's absolutely true because of this overabundance of brain cell connections. Um, so an environment that's enriched with play, sensory play and, and play materials provides the perfect life experiences to build that foundation. So. On the other hand, if those experiences are, are not there, if they're absent, the related brain connections will actually be lost. So neuroscientists discovered that enrichment for children like toys, games, and playing can actually alter a brain's chemistry and physiology. So um, another thing is the brain area that's associated with higher cognitive processing is called the cerebral cortex. So that part of the brain can benefit from environmental enrichment and play more than other parts of the brain. So it's really stimulating that early brain development for kids. The second one um, is that it improves intelligence. So early playing is also found to be associated with higher intelligence later in life. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few different studies that have um, really shown these, these, um, these connections. So one study by the University of Arkansas shows that regularly offering toys to infants to play with leads to a higher IQ by age three. So um, another psychologist, Edward Fisher, analyzed 46 studies done on play, and he found that playing could enhance a child's cognitive, linguistic, and social development. So there's tons and tons of um, research behind this um, connection to um, improved intelligence. So the third one, course, perhaps the most obvious benefit of playing is that it increases a child's creativity. Um, creativity is closely tied to divergent thinking. Um, this divergent thinking is um, a type of thinking that explores many possible solutions, um, and it typically generates those creative ideas. Um, many studies have found that playing is highly associated with this divergent thinking. Um, so um, again, to test this association in a study, researchers randomly assigned 52 children um, and they were between the ages of six and seven. They were age six and seven. Um, and these 52 children were assigned to two different activities. In the first activity, the children copied text from a chalkboard. So they're looking at a chalkboard and copying the text from a chalkboard. Kind of boring when you think about it, right? Um, but in the second um, group, the second activity, these children got to play with salt dough, which is like Play-Doh. Um, so later, these children were asked to perform a creative project, some kind of creative project. And what they found was that the projects created by the children in the Play-Doh group actually have had higher creative qualities than those in the other group. So the ones that were actually doing the hands-on fun play, um, they created more creative projects, which is, I thought was really interesting. So another power of play is improved communication skills. So the link between um, early play and later communication skills is also evident in a lot of research. Um, one study um, sought to understand whether communication could benefit from play. And what researchers observed, um, they observed what happened when an infant began playing with a toy. And what they found was that if the mother responded by manipulating and naming the toys and interacting, the baby 
when tested three months later would have better language skills. So again, showing that that connection between communication skills with um, a parent or caregiver. Um, another study that was conducted by the University of Georgia observed 65 kindergartners in their classrooms over four weeks. The presence of play, especially that pretend play, that make-believe kind of play, um, the presence of that was found to predict performance in pre-reading language and writing. So pretend play, um, again, that make-believe play, um, that's especially beneficial because it really allows um, children to practice their vocabulary um, when they speak and when they're trying to understand others. During social play, they often reciprocate or mimic each other's words um, and actions to reach agreements. And so they're building those communication skills. Number five is um, Self-regulation. Self-regulation is one of the most essential skills for school readiness. And well-regulated children, um, they can wait for their turn. They can resist temptation to grab objects. Um, well-regulated children have better control over negative emotions. Um, they can persist through challenging activities. Um, in a New Zealand study, Psychologists examined how children handled negative events during pretend plays. And what they found was that children who had more pretend plays with their caregivers were better at regulating their emotions to continue playing. Um, so that emotional regulation is, is, is important. It's not just essential for academic success, but it also can predict a child's social success. So in preschool, children who exhibit better emotional control um, they tend to be more likable and more socially competent as well. So playing is crucial in enhancing social development. So um, unstructured active play with others, including parents, siblings, and peers, um, is a perfect opportunity to cultivate those social skills. So while playing, the act of pretending as well as negotiating with peers enhances those those social skills in children. So um, playing also provides opportunities for children to learn social interaction. And while playing together, children learn to cooperate. Um, they learn to follow the rules, develop self-control, and generally just to get along um, with other people. Playful children tend to be happier they tend to be better adjusted, um, more cooperative, and even more popular with their peers than those who play less. And children who play more um, also develop more empathy. Um, and uh, empathy, of course, is another essential element that it advances social skills. Um, so those children, um, they grow to have a better understanding of other people's feelings, um, of other people's beliefs. So we already know that play promotes emotional regulation, which is, is vital for a children's resilience and, and mental health. Um, but playing um, also involves physical activities that promote motor skills, uh, muscular strength and endurance. Um, and of course, that benefits physical health as well. Children um, should be getting about, well, children elementary age should be getting about 60 minutes a day of physical activity. Um, and then also, play helps children develop the ability to solve problems. Um, so teaching these life skills. When children act out um, life's problems when pretend playing, it helps them to cope with the struggles in their own ways. And it also um, provides a safe op opportunity for children to rehearse skills and future social roles. Um, when children try out various roles, they learn to take on different perspectives, which is, again, going to further assist them in that abstract thinking. So think about when children play, um, play these roles of teacher or I'm the mom or I'm um, a doctor. So these um, roles are actually helping them to um, rehearse skills.
parents who play with their children and, and caregivers um, who play with the children form a, a, a stronger bond with the children. So even simple games like peekaboo, um, these can be those special bonding moments for caregiver and children. Um, these interactions provide positive life experience um, life experiences that are going to stimulate brain development. So when you think back on your childhood, um, what happy memories come to mind? Um, and feel free to, to share. I can't see the chat box, but feel free to share some of your favorite childhood memories. Um, you know, adults today tend to think back on their childhood play memories with that nostalgia. Um, and, you know, we hear people say, oh, the good old days, those were the good old days. Um, but we all have these memories, um, memories of joyful and meaningful play experiences. Um, they can really help bind families together emotionally, even long after children are grown. So I know I love um, to reminisce with, with my family and my siblings and, oh, remember when we used to do this and we used to, um, so I'll give you a, an example. Me and my siblings were always outside um, and we were surrounded, by, our house was surrounded by cornfields. So <laughs> we used to go and pick the corn husks and um, play and pretend we were cooking and we had a little tree house in the back and you know we came up with all sorts of games and um, ways to play so uh, feel free if anybody wants to unmute your mic you can as well but um, what are some of those favorite childhood memories that come to mind when you think about play so that um, that's just something that we can we can think about and um, we have we a have chat. A chat. Um, okay. Antonio. Okay, I can't see the chat box, so feel free to to share, <laughs> Joanne. If there's somebody. Antonio visiting cousin. Awesome. Okay. So um, just on this, on the topic of uh, meaningful play, there's some essentials to um, creating this meaningful play for children. So the first one is that children get to make their own decisions. Um, when children choose how to play for themselves, they experience that freedom in making those choices. Um, they also begin to see the connections between choice and the consequences or results of that choice. Um, the type of toys or materials that parents or caregivers offer um, can really help the children to make those more meaningful decisions. Um, so open-ended materials are important. Um, open-ended materials can be used in many different ways, so um, children can decide for themselves how to use them. I know, um, you know, you always hear parents say how they buy all these expensive to toys for their children and all they care about is the box that the, the toy came in, right? Um, but there's a reason for that. Um, you know, my children are obsessed with boxes and, and laundry baskets. <laughs> they love to climb in them. They love to pretend to, they're pretending they're taking a bath in the, in the laundry basket or pushing each other around like a car. Um, they use boxes to collect random toys and then dump them on the floor. So a box can be so many things to a child. So um, another example a child can imagine a toy block to be a fire truck or any number of things really whereas a toy fire truck is usually used as just a fire truck it, it only has one purpose um, so those open-ended materials are so important for um for creating that that um creative thinking um things like foam pieces um little wooden sticks ribbon scraps, other reusable resources, all of these are open-ended materials um, that inspire that creative thinking. And even fun when children use these things to make something that no one has ever made before. So that's something to think about as well. Sometimes we get into the habit of saying, oh, that's not a toy, or um, that's not how you use this, let me show you. 
just, you know, it's good to just let them be creative with it. Um, children are also intrinsically motivated. So the impulse to play comes from a natural desire to understand the world. Um, this play impulse can be just as strong as a child's desire for food or sleep. Um, it's an intrinsic motivation that allows a child to regulate his or her feelings. Um, because children um, eventually find it more important to be a part of play with their friends than to satisfy their own wants and needs at that moment. So eventually children, uh, children move from wanting to play by themselves to wanting to play with their friends and satisfy others' needs and not just their own. So um, this is teaching children to learn self-control. Um, and self-control has been shown to lead to success in later years, especially um, you know, in today's information age um, where distractions are a part of daily life. So this is another life skill that um, comes out of meaningful play. Play is spontaneous, um, not scripted. Often um, play is totally unplanned um, and other times play is planned, but a child might impulsively make a change. Um, so one, one um, the child changes his mind um, or, you know, perhaps the toy doesn't cooperate and the, the play changes, right? So this sense of the unknown provides children with opportunities to develop flexibility in their thinking um, and decision making, which again is another vital life skill. And then the most important um, element for meaningful play is that it's enjoyable. Um, play has always, always has an emotional response attached to it. So without this emotional connection, the experience is simply just an activity. It's not considered play. So that enjoyment is the direct result of engaging in play and it's fun. So these five essential elements um, outline why play provides a child with this rich experience. So here um, I just wanted to share a couple of quotes that relate to play. Um, this first one says, play is our brain's favorite way of learning. Um, as I mentioned in the very beginning, the concept of play is referring to those hands-on experiences. And I think even as adults, I, I think that we take more away from those hands-on experiences. Um, some of you may also be familiar with um, the 4-H program, which is the youth development component of, of extension, of the extension program. Well, one of the 4-H slogans is learn by doing. Um, so when I think about you know, different conferences and, and professional development opportunities that um, I've participated in. I think the ones that I remember most um, are the ones where hands-on activities were a part of the learning experiences. So it's just, you know, that's our brain's favorite way of learning. And then the second quote I have here says, children need the freedom and time to play. Play is not a luxury. Play is a necessity. So we've seen that there's um, so much research um, that shows the benefits and necessity of play, yet it's still getting cut out um, as something that's not important or not as important as academic learning or um, school. So what are some ways that we can support or foster an environment of play um, especially in those early years. Well, one way is to create a yes environment. So on this next slide, I have um, an additional resource here that um, I thought was just a great, um, a great resource on the topic, and it's a podcast. It's a podcast called Teach, Play, Love, um, and it has a lot of really great information for early um, childhood educators and parents. And this particular episode um, is, is on um, play. It's called Say Yes to Play. Um, and it's a specialist. I believe she's um, a specialist in education and development and a new mother. And they're conversing about the importance of play. Um, if you have some time, the video is, is like 16 minutes long, I believe. But 
Um, it's a really great podcast. I encourage you to listen to the whole thing. I'm going to play a short little snippet for you. Um, and it's just where they're talking about how to create that safe environment for children to play freely. So I'm going to um, play a short snippet. Hopefully it works. Let me see. This is Teach Play. Start it about here. Do in each given moment. So there are a lot of cousins in our family that are similar age with Tuckers, and they'll interact and play together. Is it playing in groups at a small age? Is there anything specific that? I don't think we can hear. Is it is it working? Sorry, it's not letting you hear the the YouTube podcast. Well, I'm not sure why, but um, that's OK. But um, it basically talks about creating a yes environment um, for children, especially in a setting where um, like a school setting. You don't want to have things in their environment that they're not allowed to play with. Um, you want you don't want to have to be telling children, no, no, don't touch that. Um, so you want to create that yes environment that allows them that freedom to play um, to play in a safe environment as well. But again, if you have time to listen to this whole podcast, it really has a lot of great information on the topic. So um, as I conclude my presentation, I wanted to share a few photos of my kids. Um, the one in the middle is actually my sister and I when we were little. Uh, we loved to, to play dress up and of course me being the oldest, I always played the role of the mommy or the teacher. Um, my boys, as I mentioned um, previously, they love boxes and laundry baskets. Um, we have tons and tons of pictures of them playing with this blue Lego box on the left hand side. Um, they loved that more than the actual Legos themselves. And on the far right, um, they were so excited to make this choo choo train with their with their diaper boxes. Um, and they played with that for a long period of time. So again, it can be um, really fun and, and fascinating to watch children play. It's really like you can see the little wheels turning in their brain. Um, and with that, um, again, I thank you so much for your attentiveness and your time today. Um, once more, I want to encourage everyone to prioritize play for children's health and well-being. Um, I have included my contact information here um, and then also on the last slide um, some additional resources on the topic. But that's all I have for you today. And are there any questions? Thank you, Ms. Um, Bowen. Um, before we uh, let you leave, um, regarding the post test, um, I do have um, true or false children should always be shown exactly how to play with toys and materials. The answer is false. Is that correct? We should let the children. Um, the answer is false because um, especially with those open ended materials, um, you know, we talked about um, allowing them freedom to play with it the way that they that they, they want to use their imagination. So um, just because a toy has one specific purpose, you know, we can allow them freedom to to um, um, use their imagination as well. So it would be false. Great. And then um, the second one, at what age um, to, do children begin to participate in a cooperative um, play? Is so, that four and up? Cooperative play happens at four and up. Yes, ma'am. OK, so it will be um, A and um, B and D. OK, any questions for Miss Stephanie? This is where we can unmute the mic or we can write in the chat box if you feel uncomfortable. We'll give it a minute.
All right, I guess no questions. Thank you, Miss Stephanie. You did a great job. I learned a lot about um, the play and how important play is for children. And I really like that they can, um, we can leave their imaginations. They can do uh, whatever. Boxes are, are a great gift to have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, next um, we have an, another session that begins at 10 o'clock. Um, we have 10 more minutes. Mm -hmm. um, they Miss Stephanie, they said thank you. Great presentations. Got good ideas for my classroom. Um, next, we have a presentation at 10 o'clock. Um, it's 9.51. If we can be back at 9.57, um, it will be a coffee break, a stretch break, and then um, we'll continue with the next um, mm -hmm with the next um, presentation. Ms. Lilling, do you want to add anything before um, they take the break? No, thank you and enjoy your break. See you in a uh, few minutes. Yeah, you can just um, leave it logged in and then um, come back soon. Thank you. <laughs> 